Hello, I'm Neil Clark. I'm going to talk in this uh, lecture about the characteristic direction, uh, which is a new uh, geometrical approach to the analysis of, of differential expression. So, first I'd like to just uh, try and convince you that the kinds of things that we're going to deal with here are more than just technicalities of informatics. They're, um, they're real problems concerning the use of um, so high dimensional or high throughput um, data uh, to infer um, meaning in biology. Uh, so I'm going to illustrate a couple of problems uh, there and I'm going to tell you about our approach with the characteristic direction and how this is uh, designed to address some of these issues. Um, then I'm going to talk about uh, a validation of this method um, and, and a comparison to the other sort of commonly used uh, approaches to differential expression. So first I'd like to talk about some of the challenges of differential expression analysis. The first challenge I'd like to illustrate stems from the fact that genes don't function in isolation but they work as part of a complex network. Genes are talking to each other over a complex network of interactions. Now this is a, an issue when it comes to univariate or multivariate approaches. The univariate approach uh, looks gene by gene and consider each gene in isolation from the other, from the rest. And a, a multivariate approach, um, it takes into account this uh, the, the place that each gene has in this in this whole. Now, another thing that we, we might need to think about is um, the, the the structure, the high dimensional structure of the data. This is something that a multivariate method is is best able to um, address. Now, if you look at the figure here. We're illustrating um, a gene expression profile um, as a point in a space. We'll call this expression space. And what we're doing is we're taking the expression of each gene as being a coordinate in this space. If we just consider that we've just got two genes, we have two coordinates, an X and a Y coordinate, and they, and they identify a, a point in this space. So each point here represents a microarray profile. Now, if we repeat this measurement, in a, in a, keeping the biological state the same, we repeat this measurement, we don't expect to get exactly the same answer. There will be some variation happening here. Some of this will be technical variation, technical noise, but some of it will be of a, a, an interesting biological origin. And as you can see in this video here, this a simple example of the kind of um, variation uh, that we might get is a simple correlation between a pair of genes. Now, what this is showing us here is that there is a, there is a structure to the data in a, in a high dimensional space. And what we would like to do in, in our approach to differential expression is to, is to use this structure. Our hypothesis is that this is uh, important information when uh, determining the differential expression between states. Lastly, there are always m much fewer microarrays than there are genes. So what this means is the, the points in this gene expression space, as the number of genes increases, the points become more and more dilute, and we have a harder time characterizing the structure in the data. This is a statistical issue. Here I've got a, a simple illustration of how taking a multivariate approach as opposed to a univariate gene-by-gene -gene approach can um, lead to a much better characterization of the differential expression. So here we have we have two states. We've colored these might be a diseased and a normal state, or a, a, a control and a, and a perturbed uh, state. And these are illustrated by uh, the color red or blue. And each point in this in this space, this is still a two-dimensional gene expression space. Each point represents a, a microarray profile. Now, if we take a univariate approach. To, to this problem here, we allow all the points to fall onto, let's say we just consider gene 1. And we allow all the points to fall down onto the gene 1 axis. And we examine the distribution. These are illustrated by the, um, the curved um, uh, graphs there. Now if we look, just look at gene 1, we might consider that gene 1 is not really differentially expressed. The distributions have such a large overlap but we might say gene 1 is not differentially expressed. And we can do the same for gene 2. If we just look at gene 2 in isolation, 
there, the distribution of the expression values of gene 2 are overlapping so much for the, the red and the blue states that gene 2 is not differentially expressed. However, if we look at the, at the whole, look at gene 1 and gene 2 all together, then clearly there is a, 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 there's a very clear differential expression happening here. Uh, the, the two clouds of points are not overlapping at all. So this is, firstly, it's an illustration of how taking a multivariate approach um, can help us uh, really reveal, uh, really characterize the differential expression. And secondly, we're also beginning to sort of illustrate the approach that we're taking here with this arrow um, illustrated. If instead of letting the points fall uh, onto the gene 1 axis or the gene 2 axis, if we let them fall onto this arrow, which is uh, essentially a, a combination of both genes, then look at the distribution, we really clearly see uh, the difference. And so we're going to sort of take this further and we're going to characterize the whole differential expression in terms of a, a direction illustrated by this, this arrow. So I can uh, further characterize what I, what I mean by this. Here it, we're still going to work in a two-dimensional gene expression space. All this sort of generalizes into the uh, higher dimensional spaces that, is, that we will encounter with real data when we have 20,000 genes. And what we're going to visualize is uh, we're going to picture a biological state as occupying a region of this space. So here I'm illustrating two, two states, maybe control and a perturbed state, and they occupy different regions of uh, gene expression space. And uh, the, the basic idea is to characterize the differential expression as a direction in this space. And it's the it's the kind of it's the direction that you move as you go from one state to another, very broadly speaking. Now the way we so we calculate this direction is to first use um, a linear classification boundary. We we use the structure and the data in order to best divide the expression space into two regions, one belonging to the control state and one identified with the perturbed state. Now a linear classification boundary takes the form of a hyperplane, it's a, a high dimensional version of a plane, and the orientation of a hyperplane is determined by its normal vector. Now this normal vector is um, what we are going to interpret as being the direction that best characterizes the differential expression. So that's the end of this first part, and in the second part we're going to go into a little bit more detail about how exactly we calculate this, uh, this characteristic direction.